one of the greatest bounties. Allah Azza wa Jal can bestow on any of his slaves is the bounty of enjoying the performance of acts of worship. Enjoying acts of worship is a state during which the slave's soul feels comfort and the heart feels joy. And naturally, this differs from one person to the other. And with the same person, it also differs from one time to the other as it is directly connected to the level of faith. And only those who are deserving of such a state will receive it from Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, this is something that is worthy of striving and working hard to achieve and obtain. And as in all matters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our leading example, set the best model in this, as he did in everything else, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. An example of this is was reported by an Imam Muslim. Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhu. And he was not the only one. Hudayf ibn al-Yaman narrates that one night he joined the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Qiyam al-Layl. He came and he noticed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pray in Qiyam so he joined him. He said, so he started Surah Al-Baqarah. He said, so I said to myself, he will recite a hundred verses and then go to Rukur. He went beyond that. He said, so I said to myself, he will recite 200 and bow. So he went beyond that. He said, so I said, okay, so he will conclude it and then go to Rukur. He finished it and started An-Nisa. Then he finished it and started Al-Imran. Which is, of course, not the sequence as you notice. But the point here is that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, quantity wise, finished more than five juz in one rak'ah. Now, this is when we're talking about quantity. Now, what was the quality of his prayer? Hudayfa said his recitation was unhurried. He was slow. And whenever he came to a verse where Allah is praised, he would stop and praise Allah. Whenever there was a verse when one needed to seek refuge in Allah from any evil, he would stop and seek refuge in Allah. When there is a verse that entails asking Allah something, he would stop and ask Allah. Can you imagine how long this first rak'ah took? It must have been very long. He's not the only one, radiallahu anhu. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud in knowledge. Amongst the, sc the scholars of the companions. A reference to the companions. He said, one night I joined the Prophet like Hudayfa did. I joined the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Qiyamul Layl. And after a while I intended, I was about to do something bad. They said, what? He said, I was about to sit down. He couldn't tolerate standing all this period. The period during which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reciting the first rak'ah. This long recitation 
And then, by the way, his ruku'ah, as in the hadith of Hudayfa, his ruku'ah was as long as his qiyam. You can imagine how long these two rak'ahs took for that night. This long prayer had to be driven by an inner joy which made him disconnect with this world and be focused and enjoy what he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing. Which is something we lack. This joy in worship. Khalid ibn al-Walid, whose nickname was Sayfullah al-Maslul, the sword of Allah against the enemies of Allah. Why? Because Khalid ibn al-Walid never was in an army that was defeated before Islam or after Islam. He was the reason why the Muslims in the battle of Uhud were defeated. Khalid ibn al-Walid, had joy in jihad. He, radiyallahu anhu, said, and in one of the narrations they said, he said this on his, that time of, in the time of his death, radiyallahu anhu. He said, there is nothing, there is absolutely nothing more enjoyable by me than being in an army in a rainy night, extremely cold, snowing. So he gathered everything. And I will be spending that night until the morning in preparation and awaiting the opportunity to go and attack the army, the, the army of the enemies of Allah. He said, Nothing is more enjoyable to me than this. Not even walking in on a woman whom I love on my wedding night with her. That doesn't come close to him, to the joy he feels when he is fighting for the sake of Allah. And Imam al-Nawawi radiyallahu anhu wa rahimahullah the known famous scholar. In his biography, they wrote something that was astonishing, mind-blowing. They said, one thing that was known to all those who lived around him and knew him, is that he hardly slept. He enjoyed knowledge. This great act of worship, of seeking and teaching knowledge. To the point that sleep was not something that important for him. He himself said about himself, he said, I spent two full years not lying down to sleep. When he was asked about his sleep, how did you sleep? He said, I will be writing, I will be authoring. And then I will be overtaken by sleep, so I'll just put my head on the book or the notebook I'm writing on for a while and then I'll wake up and continue. This dedication took joy. He had to be enjoying himself to give up everything else. He had to love what he was doing, enjoy what he was doing. It must have been something that tasted sweet. As the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari. Three qualities. Whoever possesses them will taste the sweetness of faith. So faith has sweetness. Worship has sweetness. You feel it. You will feel it when you reach that state. The first thing is when Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
are more beloved to you than all else. Anything or anyone else. And when you love a person for no other reason but for Allah, meaning there is no benefit or gain expected out of that love. Number three is to hate, to retreat on faith. Leave your faith. Just as much as you hate to be thrown in the fire. Commenting on that first segment of the hadith, one of the scholars said, when the love of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is more than the love of anything or anyone else. He said, this is only tested. The truthfulness of this claim to love Allah and His Messenger وسلم, more than anything and anyone else. This is only tested when there's a conflict. I'll give an example when there is no conflict. Allah Azza wa Jal forbade us from fasting the day of Eid or the days of Eid. So not refraining from food and drink is something that is a nature to mankind. So when you don't refrain from eating and drinking on the days of Eid, there is no conflict. So it's easy. The real test is when there's a conflict, a real conflict. I'll give an example. Someone holding a, uh, a high rank in a company, right? Very handsome salary and benefits and then after a while his boss or the ceo of the company calls him in and say uh, mr so and so we need you to do this and it is haram what he is requested to do is haram allah hates it <coughs> this is the real test if he gives in to him then that is a false claim the claim to love Allah and His Messenger وسلم, more than anything else will know. The test proved negative. You're not truthful. Because now Allah came second. Your sal salary and benefit came first. How does one achieve this? How can I Obtain this joy and sweetness when I'm worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. Number one, persistence and patience. Ibn al Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi said, Acts of worship in the beginning are difficult. But if one persists and perseveres this difficulty with sincerity, he is truthful about him wanting to continue and achieve that state. He said, only then he will achieve that state. Why? Because... By nature, mankind are inclined to comfort. So when you tell someone, get up two hours before Salat al-Fajr or an hour before Salat al-Fajr to pray Qiyam, or wake up for Salat al-Fajr itself, or refrain from food and drink and all of that to fast in Ramadan or optional days, these are things that go against comfort. We like to relax and be comfortable. This is nature. This is our nature. That's why it is difficult in the beginning. But when one has determination, patience and persistence, he will certainly achieve that state. A wise man once said, I continued to lead myself my inner self to the obedience of Allah while it's crying until eventually I was leading it to the obedience of Allah 
whilst it was laughing. Sounds a little strange. Well, one of the scholars commented on this statement. He said, this is because the nature of oneself, one's inner self, is like a child. When a child wants something, he will continue to cry and cry and cry until you're fed up and give in. And allow him or her to achieve what they want, to do what they want, to enjoy the pleasure they want. And this is the similitude of our inner selves. It's like that crying child. It will continue to cry and cry and cry and bug you and trouble you and persist and persist until you either seek the support of Allah and you persist and make it give up or you will weaken and give in and give up. Another means of uh, obtaining this joy and sweetness when worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal is to refrain and stay away from sins and disobedience. Uhayb ibn al-Ward, and he is one of the tabi'i tabi'in, the generation after the tabi'in, the third generation. He, he was a known scholar amongst the uh, people of his time. Was asked once, when would one lose the pleasure of worship? When he sins? He said, no, when he thinks about sinning, when he intends to sin, he would, he would then start losing that joy, let alone sinning in itself. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi in this regard said, when you do not have this feeling of joy, when worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, then accuse yourself. Something is wrong with you. Look for your sins, in other words. He said, because Allah Azza wa Jal is shakur, grateful, appreciates what we do. And He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, rewards people for their worship by making them enjoy Feel the sweetness of worship. So if you don't find it, then look for the, the fault in yourself. Look for the mistake in you. Look for the shortcomings. Look for your sins. So sins block this. Prevent us from enjoying worship. Excess in food and drink. Except, as the people of knowledge said, except for what is needed for one to maintain himself so he can work and run his worldly tasks or affairs and be able to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا And eat and drink, but, but don't be extravagant. Now extravagance here is anything beyond your need. That's excess, that's not needed. Because that eventually makes the person attached to these matters. And when the heart is attached to this, it would lose, slowly lose interest in the other thing. The joy of worship would weaken. So that's another thing. Remembering that Allah Azza wa Jal loves you when you worship Him is a means of achieving that sweetness and joy. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah said, a Qudusi narration, 
Allah said, My slave will not draw nearer to me by virtue of any, anything more than fulfilling his obligations. And he will continue, my slave will continue to perform optional acts of worship until I love him. And when I love him, I become his hearing by which he hears, his eyes or his sight by which he sees, his hands by which he strikes, and his feet by which he walks. And if he asks of me, I will give him. If he seeks refuge in me, I will protect him. When you know that acts of worship makes you achieve this, this love of Allah, the support of Allah, the protection of Allah, you will certainly enjoy them when you're performing them. Finally, remembering that the recompense of these acts of worship will not go to waste. The reward is not going to be wasted. It's not going to end. It's not going to vanish. Everything in this life ends and vanishes. Health, wealth, time, youth, life in itself, positions, social status, you name it. Everything comes to an end. But when it comes to the reward of the acts of worship you performed for Allah Azza wa Jal's sake, that's everlasting. So when one remembers this, and remembers that Allah Azza wa Jal will also put barakah in his life, as a result of worship in him, he will certainly enjoy what he is doing. Remembering that you will be rewarded, and that reward is going to be kept and multiplied for you, is definitely a reason for want to enjoy what they're doing. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, and with this I conclude, commented on the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ Indeed, the pious are in bliss. We ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. He said, this ayah or the bliss in this ayah is not only talking about something that will take place in the hereafter. Rather, he said, rather, it is something they will enjoy in the three places of residence. In this dunya, in the grave, and in the hereafter. Then he goes on saying, and what more of a bliss in this life can any slave achieve more than the joy he feels when he's worshiping Allah? We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to achieve this beautiful state, to make us achieve or taste the sweetness of faith and the joy of worship. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma